Hello everyone, my name is Simon Delen and I am the Strapi Squad Lead Developer at Virgin Media. Uh, thank you at least for having me for this talk and so today you know, we could talk about uh, how I started to implement and hack multi-tenancy. Now, uh, a little bit about me. Um, as I said, my name is Simon Delin. I work for Virgin Media as the squad lead developer. So we're a squad about three people so far. Uh, some of those things that I really, really, really am passionate about has been Strappy, of course. Uh, anything that has to do with Docker, JavaScript, TypeScript, open source. Um, yeah, uh, I'm also a mentor. I uh, work for a company called Code Institute where I teach people that have never ever coded in their life how to become developers or at least join in as juniors. Um, some of the places you can find me, GitHub, LinkedIn, my blog, the forums, Discord, anywhere where Strappy is. Uh, on the note of my blog, I did publish some content earlier which has to do with how to deploy Strappy using Docker and how we can use it for local development, which is what we're going to do in this demo today. So enough about me. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what are we going to do today. So I thought I'll run through a little bit about the problem we have at uh, Virgin Media at least. And the solution I came up with, show you a little bit about a demo for how we did it and add some future plans for what we're doing. Now, hands up notes straight up. I know four is out. I love four myself. Uh, because we're a big business, we're currently using three. So this demo will be using um, Strapi version three. And I'll get back to that in future plans and the demo. Now, problem itself has been keeping data synchronized uh, while we having multiple environments. So for us, we have a content platform where all our content editors and everybody else is working on it we have a stage place where we can talk about and you know ad hoc releases last minute changes you know things like that we also have a production environment which is of course where all the customers and everything else can see what we're doing and we also have a pipeline that runs and copies data across so this is how our workflow is uh some people or let's say a content editor will do their work and I'll hit the save button and this has a bunch of other stuff that's been implemented into it hence why it was been a problem we had to add custom statuses and check it and if it's there and all the way we kind of have to run with that and then copy and duplicate data or this goes to stage and as I said ad hoc releases and last minute changes are there in case anything should happen and we want to deal with it and then it goes straight to production so this pipeline will look up uh, with the API on the content platform and then it will download the data and then it will copy it to stage and to production or from stage to production in that well. Uh, and this pipeline and the way it's doing has been a little bit of a problem, at least when I started. I only been for Virgin Media for about five months now. So what I thought about it is, you know, here's the pain and problems I have as a developer. Now, the first one for content release that takes time that's not really me as a developer that's more for the actual people that are working with it it takes basically hours and caching and everything else and we've all been there so that's been one of those big problems it takes time for them to sit and wait oh look it's live and everything else and then the more collections we add that means the bigger the pipeline it's going and the bigger the workload it gets and the bigger the pipeline it gets the worse the experience gets because our tool and our pipeline works on that we have to customize the data we're doing and kind of duplicate it into that self project which means it gets pretty frustrating because i have to maintain two projects not only our strappy instances and everything else but also this pipeline and somebody else adds it when i'm on holiday or somebody else is not on the team we then have to um to update for that and then update the collections and everything and the tools all the data is copied correctly and then going through a whole different project and debugging those contents is that it's it's a pain. I I, I mean I literally as the Gibb said, I, I just give up. It is it, it's a really pain thing. So I thought has to be a better solution for this. So the idea I came up with was to leverage the entity service API so we can use Strapi to talk to Strapi. I mean, Strapi is a headless CMS and an API. So why, I mean, we're humans and developers, we kind of figure out that, you know, why not make Strapi talk to Strapi? 
in, in blatantly simple terms. Why not just make it talk to each other? And some of those things we found out around that was that I came up with this idea of calling it multi-tenancy, station to station, multi-tenancy, the you know, child has many names. And some of the things that I kind of found out when I was trying to build it was that it, it saves time, right? Because Strappy already knows about all the collections, so I don't have to update it manually. And we can always just make it talk to another instance, depending on different hooks or services and when we actually wanted to do things. And for me and the developer team, it's a better developer experience, right? Because everything is inside that Strapi application and I don't have to maintain a different set of repos and everything else just to maintain everything else. So overall, it's, it's less code base. It's just one project. And in a simple term, when we're saying forward and onwards has to do with that multi-tenancy, we can kind of like either A, send a request from, let's say, content platform to stage, or we can say, we can also then receive them as in stage can get the data from um, listen out for the changes from the content platform. Uh, we can also forward the request. So we can say stage will listen out for data. It will get some data from the content platform when we send it. And then it will take the exact same request and forward it to production. Meaning it will literally just go forward or trickle down the way you're looking at it. And that means we kind of get instant data transfer because we don't have to wait for the pipeline to run. Nobody else needs to deal with that. And whenever we use basic prod functionality, it, like I said, it trickles down to the next, next instance. You delete something, you add something, you edit something, it will trickle down. There, there, I'll get to that in the demo, but it's meant to show that we can technically have it send bigger chunks of data down the line and don't have to wait and wait and wait. So the new workflow we came up with was to, as I said, the content editors can create and edit uh, their content and they can just hit save and publish like they are used to. And then now instead to fiddle with a hundred other things and publish statuses and everything else, it's instantly available because we're using the web hooks and Strapi to listen out for it. So when you hit save, we will determine what we need to do. And I will just trickle down straight to stage, right? And it already has that data. So it's already stored into it. And then we can do the same thing for production because we can trickle it down to production. So that means you can hit save button once and it can keep going as many environments as you have. So as an example, if you are a web agency and you want to create new users or a blog and you were posting, I don't know, 50 pages, you can literally just make them trickle down to every single page. So you have one place, you hit save, go straight through in one API request, which technically is quite nice because then we don't need to deal with it and we know that the data is there. And that gives you like one place, or like a master location to deal with all the different data you actually have. Now, a lot of my content editors go to me, oh, how, how, how do you solve this? We have had this you know, pipeline for a while and how, how do you do it? And you know, tell them it's magic. We're developers, it's pure magic. I just lifted a wand and voila, it's, it's all done. But since you know, our developers I might be watching, let's, uh, let's look at under the hood, shall we? So under the hood, uh, we create a Strapi plugin to hook into that ecosystem. And all we're doing is just listening to webhook events. And then we decide upon how, if we want to update them, create them or delete the content we're doing. We also decide if we want to send the data or do we also want to re relay that data. And then the cycle competes. So as you can see on the screenshots here, uh, the top one is what we're sending it from. So we are sending something with a UID of, uh, of test and it's part of the footer model. And then it will send that to that server and then we also add it in. So on the receiving end, we can log it out and say, we found the footer model. We found that it was a single type because collection types are different. We have single types, collection types, there's a billion of them. And then we either will create the model or we will update the model. And that's why I said we can decide on what we want to do. Um, those type of things makes it quite, you know, easier for people to work with because they don't have to deal with everything else around everything else. It just goes seamlessly and instant. So people ask me like, boss and whatnot goes like, how, how, how does that save time? Like, how does that save time? Well, I calculated to say, if you have five minutes on that pipeline, it takes for that job to do it. And that pipeline is around once an hour. So 24 hours a day, 
that is two hours. Let's say it's a big lull. It's 10 minutes. That's that's you know, four hours every day saved where I can actually just say that I did something and have a coffee break. But, you know, it's it's time saved because that pipeline is just running and it makes the content editors and at least my experience a lot easier to deal with. Now, the cool part with this is, as I said before, the plugin is for three. Uh, we are going to migrate it over to four as well. But that also means, theoretically, we could send data from three to four. Even though not, not the tools as in migrate to data, any new data that we hook into, we can do it, which is, which in my opinion is quite nice. Now, let's go over a demo, right? And in this demo, again, let me notice that we are currently running uh, on Strat PV3. So I will uh, pull up my terminals over here. Uh, as you can see on my right hand side, we have our content editor platform. So let's uh, let's run that in a second. And then our target environment, or let's say stage in this matter, is or int is a technical just to docu compose, and then we're just gonna uh, listen in on what the logs are. So if we run this, we'll give it a second. This also starts our Postgres database that I'm currently running with. So we'll give that a second to start. Now this will log out everything. So then we can start the other server locally. Everything in Docker is quite sweet because it saves me from doing it. Now, the first thing you can see on the right hand side is that receive is set to false in config and it's not listening for a request. And I'll show that in a second once we open it all up. Now, our developer server is ready. And all I have done here quite literally is it is a bog standard installment of Three, I have added a blog and I have added a footer and that's it. And this, again, since this is a docu, um, docu container, it's the same thing with the same code, and but it has two separate databases. One database instance, two separate tables. So we're just gonna let this finish building here for a second. And while that is building, I am actually just going to pull up my VS code because we will need this. And then we can go through the whole code in a second as well. So let's see if we want to open everything else. I apologize. I'm currently running this in Windows. I'm normally on Mac and it's a pain. There we go. All good. Right. So as you will notice now, if I try to add a footer, if I go to footer, I'm going to say awesome. And that is automatically duplicated. Now, one of those things that is required for multi-tenancy to work is a UID. So as simple as we can do this first and show, you can go into uh, the content type builder, we can hit the footer and all I created was a UID. And that is because the UID is listening, it's using that to match up with the other instance. And that was because of, let's say you have a footer um, or a blog and everything else, and you're just checking the ID that it is, then if I then on the right hand side on our, let's say stage environment, make a change or create something new, we will start over a data we don't want. So we need something that we know is unique, hence why this UID is in here. Anyways, let's go to footer and we'll say awesome, right. awesome footer. As you can see here, if I click here, it's, it's nothing in here. So if I now click save, Please note down on the terminals below, uh, when I hit save, it will tell us that there was no permissions to check the target environment, but it did try to send some data. And that is just because we can go into settings, we can go into rules, we can go to public for this matter. I mean, you can set up the authenticator if you want to. Uh, for this demo purposes, we'll do it for public. And we literally just say put and post, hit save. That's it, nothing more. Again, all I will do is I'm going to go in here. Now, we already created this text. So let's say awesome strappy conf 2022. I'll, uh, oh, let's do awesome strappy conf. Like so. If I hit save, again, please note the part down here. It now says it sends the awesome footer model and it successfully created it. And in the other side, you will see that it found the, uh, the footer and it found out it was a single type. Now, this has to do with we're trying to decide what way we're dealing with it. If it's a single type in the database itself, you can technically post many times. 
but because it is um, the way we set it up is uh, a single type will always update the first element. So that's why we're dealing if it's a single type or not. And it created our footer. We go to footer, voila, edited, done. I go in here and say something, save it. Now this has to do with receiving. This one is not trickling down anything. It is only receiving data. And I'll show you in a second why. Now, if I go back here, I reload. You can see in here, nothing has changed. So we can say 2022. We save it, update it, and voila, all working nice. Now, when it comes to, let's say, collection types, let's take a blog. When it's awesome blog, so we'll say awesome blog. Welcome to Strapi Conf 2022, right? And then we have a date and whatnot, and we hit save. Same thing. Now you notice that this detects this as a collection type. So I go to blogs. I can go in here, reload it. And when you look at that, we have a blog. Now notice the IDs and whatnot. That is just because I've been test running this for fun before as well. I didn't empty my whole database. The, the thing is, a lot of you will be like, oh my God, I can do this with users. Currently in this alpha, then what we have, users haven't been fixed yet to be set up. The same with delete and publish. Publish will be put in here. So to show you a little bit of it quickly about inside the code, all we're doing is we have the plugins. This is our development environment. So this is the left-hand side. We have literally just put in to send data. And then we put in not to listen out for any data. We don't we won't, won't want to do it. So technically we can make an infinite loop by make it go around and around in circles, not what we want, and we're aware of it. And uh, the int environment, which is our right hand side, uh, we can click here and we can see that H1 is receiving data, it's not sending any data. So if I now wanted to actually make this send it to a different URL, I could take send, hit the URL to the strappy, done. And the multi-tenancy is quite simply set up in that it has a service which is dealing with sending the data. And then we have a controller that will listen out for data and deal with it. So as an example in the service here, if we skip all the way down, this is where we can say update and create, or we can add publish or delete and deal with everything accordingly and what we want. So that's, that's literally the demo for me. So what I kind of want to run into here now is the last bit of it. So I hope you enjoy that. And if you like it, by all means, um, we will release it. So what's the future plans? And that is we want to migrate it. We want to open source it and we want to maintain it. So we want to, as I said, we're a big business, Virgin Media. So things take time. We're also waiting on migrating to v4. Right. So we want to do that. We want to open sources. I'm also part of the Strapi community organization. So we will put it under there and then we will maintain it. We want to have a working three version and a four version. And if you think that you can help out with this, by all means, make a pull request for it and we'll put that out later. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, hit me up. I am on Twitter, GitHub, LinkedIn, forums, Discord, whatnot. And I really hope you uh, enjoy this talk and uh, have a nice day.